It was a busy weekend in the Islanders prospect pool. So let's go over what happened between January 7th, 8th and 9th in your weekend update. Happy Lumberjack Monday. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 600 at 560. We're getting there. Also, go to Twitter, follow at TLO Mitch, just because sometimes I'll tweet something that I haven't yet put on the channel, so I don't want you to miss anything. As we do every Monday, not only do I wear a plaid, but we start off this weekend update by just flashing a bunch of names and number on the screen. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing again, just put a bunch of names and number on the screen. These are most of the prospects that played over the weekend. Not every one of them, of course, because sometimes prospects just don't do anything. They might have played one game and registered no helpers, no goals, no shots, no nothing. And it doesn't mean that they're not important, just means that we don't really need to talk about nothing happening necessarily. Uh, unless it's kind of like Samuel Bozik, where really nothing happens. Uh, but so here's the uh, the prospect update. I've picked out three players to talk about, and so we'll get to those afterwards. But here's your overall look about what happened in the Islanders prospect pool this weekend. The first player I want to talk about from the weekend is Simon Holmstrom, who in two games had one assist, two shots on goal, and did score. It was in the shootout, so it doesn't get reflected in the actual stat sheet. It's one heck of a nice goal, right? Completely sells the goalie backhand before pulling it forehand. Just really smart stuff from Simon Holmstrom. Smart and skilled, right? Like, you gotta have the skill to execute that, not just being able to think it. Uh, and that's kind of the thing that we see with Simon Holmstrom, not only over the weekend, but over his career, and specifically this year, we're seeing him take that step forward, right? Remember at the beginning of the year, I said, this is going to be a big year for Simon Holmstrom, mainly because it has to be. But I thought, like, he's going to have a better or bigger role for this team, and he's going to be playing with better players, and that's going to help him. And we see he's already having a career year, 16 points in 31 games. He's over half a point at the AHL level. And while, yes, that's not necessarily dominant at any in any way, uh, shape, or form, but it is a good showing. And again, it's a career year for him, right? 16 points is already more than he's ever done at the AHL level. So things are going in the right direction for Simon Holmstrom. And over the weekend, we saw that. Like, the production was kind of there, right? He's got one point over two games, so that's the half point right there. And he provides a really nice shootout goal. So you're going, the skill is there, the impact is there. And then the off the puck stuff as well was there, or I shouldn't say off the puck, the off the stat sheet stuff was there as well, right? When the Bridgeport Islanders were trying to force a tie in that in the 2-2 or the 3-2 OT or shootout loss, I should say, against the Charlotte Checkers on Sunday, Simon Holmstrom's line and Simon Holmstrom specifically were out there carving out opportunities or to try and carve out opportunities, and they were doing it consistently. They were a dangerous line out there, and Simon Holmstrom was a big factor in that. So things, again, are going in the right direction for Simon Holmstrom. The second player I want to talk about is Etul Yukas, who had a goal, an assist, a shot on goal, and 14 minutes and 50 seconds worth of ice time for TPS over the weekend. So that's two points in one game for the, I'm going to mess this one up, fifth round pick. I keep forgetting exactly what round everyone was in for some reason. I don't know why, but anyways, I know it's a fifth round pick, right? Ratu, Lennox, Berg, and then we've got Etul Yukas. Um, so, really good stuff. I couldn't get a video of the goal or the helper. I wasn't able to watch the game just because I can't watch them all. Uh, but I also just couldn't find any video anywhere. So, if any of you watching have have seen this goal and if I have video of it, please let me see it. Because I haven't been able to see anything either from TPS themselves or the Liga website. Just because I live in Canada and they don't let me see it over there. The production is what I want to focus on though. He's now up to 5 points in 25 games. And you'll say like, that's not wildly impressive and sure it's it's not really five points in 25 games is not a lot of production uh but he's been bounced around from the u20 level where he put up 20 points in 13 games i think that might be a little off but like that's still really good um and now he's got five and 25 where he's playing a more consistent uh role for tps in their bottom six 
he's not just playing fourth line minutes, right? He might be listed on the fourth line, but you can see here with almost 15 minutes worth of ice time, he's asked to do more, and now the production is coming. So I really like this player. I don't project him to be a impact player at the NHL level, but I do think he could make a career at the NHL in a bottom, at least in a fourth line role. The final player I want to talk about is Arnaud Durando, who over the weekend played twice, had two assists and five shots on goal. He is having a more consistent impact for these Bridgeport Islanders. In his last six games, he has five points. Things are going well for Arnaud Durando of late. He had a little bit of a dip, uh, which is a worrying sign for someone like him because he needs to really be consistent to stand out. But he's applying himself and the effort is there and he's showing up on that stat sheet. Uh, the one assist that I really want to highlight here, while everyone's going to focus on the goal being from Otto Koivula batting it out of the air with a backhanded in, you've got to give something to Arnaud Zerando for creating that opportunity from behind the goal. It's very uh, Zergus-ish, if you will. Uh, not not quite the same thing. I, I think the idea was not obviously to do that, but it was to get it into the slot and ended bouncing around and then Otto Koivula had the, you know, the, the manual dexterity to bat that one in. So focus, of course, on Otto Koivula, but also focus on Arnaud Zorando there, trying to get it, like doing a good thing from a good spot, right? Like you're behind the net, you don't have a scoring opportunity, and he's probably not going to do a reverse Michigan or anything like that, so might as well get it to the slot, because that's where your high danger opportunities come from. But again, for Arnaud Zorando, it's staying consistent, getting or applying that effort on a consistent basis. And he's doing that, and the points are there. And what I mean by the points are there is through 34 games, he has 20 points, which crushes his previous career high of 8. He had 8 points in 14 games last year, which is good, right? Now he's got 20 and 34. It's consistently there. Do I think he's got an NHL future? I, I don't know. But he seems to be a good AHLer, and you still kind of need those guys. That's your weekend update. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. If you have, thank you, thank you, thank you.